How to choose a crib mobile. Don't get caught up in trying to find a mobile that matches your nursery. Babies don't give a lick about decor. The right mobile is one that's safe and entertaining. You will need a selection of mobiles to choose from, a baby to react to them, and a tape measure. Step one, look for bold patterns and bright contrasting colors. You may have heard that babies only like black and white, but that's not true. The brighter, the better. Step two, make sure that the images or objects that hang from the mobile face downward so your baby can see them. Some mobiles revolve, play music, or perform other stunts. Be sure to check your baby's reaction to these features before settling on a mobile, and always avoid flashing lights. They make it harder for your baby to drift off to sleep. Step three, inspect the dangling objects themselves. Avoid anything with sharp edges or small parts that could break off and make their way into your baby's mouth. Step four, inspect the length of the strings the objects dangle from. They should be no longer than six inches, so they can't get wrapped around any part of your baby. Step five, examine how the mobile connects to the crib. Make sure the connection is secure and stable with sturdy clamps or heavy duty Velcro. Ideally, you should be able to swing the mobile out away from the crib when it's time for baby to sleep. Once a baby can push up on her hands and knees, remove the mobile from her crib. She could reach it and pull it down. Step six, once you find a mobile that fits the bill, attach it to the crib and watch your baby's eyes light up. Did you know, by three to four months, a baby should be able to track a moving object, such as the parts of a mobile, with both eyes. How to choose a pacifier. For an infant, sucking on a pacifier can be supremely soothing. So here's how to keep your little sucker happy and pacified. You will need a baby, a variety of pacifiers to choose from, and a tape measure. Warning, never tie a pacifier to any part of a baby or to her clothing or crib. Whatever you use could get tangled around her neck. Step one, choose the right pacifier for your baby's age. Pacifiers come in three sizes, those for babies six months and younger, for babies from six to 18 months, and for babies over 18 months old. A baby's drive to suck is especially intense between two and four months, so this is a good time to present a pacifier. Step two, choose a well-made pacifier. The best pacifiers are one piece with the nipple and base firmly attached. Pacifiers with multiple parts could come apart and pose a choking hazard. Step three, choose a pacifier with a soft and pliable nipple. Despite the availability of so-called orthodontically shaped pacifiers, the only thing that really matters is that the nipple feels right to your baby. Latex nipples are softer than silicone ones, but silicone doesn't retain odors and holds up better after repeated cleanings. Step four, choose a pacifier with a wide shield. That's the part of the base that presses against the outside of the baby's mouth. It should be at least an inch and a half wide. Any narrower and it could fit inside a baby's mouth. It should also have air holes to help keep moisture from building up beneath it, which could lead to a rash. Step five, choose a brightly colored pacifier. They're easier to find for both the baby, who may wake and look for it during nap time, and for you, when you're trying to locate it under the sofa or dig it out of the depths of a diaper bag. Step six, choose a pacifier that's dishwasher safe. Pacifiers mysteriously disappear all the time. So when you find the right one for your baby, don't hesitate, stock up on it. Step seven, lastly, but most importantly, choose a pacifier your baby likes. Offer her several different models to choose from. She'll know what she likes and spit out the rest. Did you know in Britain, Australia, and New Zealand, pacifiers are called dummies, while in Canada, they're called soothers. How to choose toys for your baby. Toy recalls are on the rise. To find out about specific toys, visit the Consumer Product Safety Commission's website at www.cpsc.gov. Safety, of course, should be your number one concern when buying toys for your baby, but there are other considerations to keep in mind. You will need time to shop and common sense. Step one, visit toy stores. Even if you plan to use mail order or buy online, it's a good idea to check out a toy in person. The best toys for kids 18 months and under include mobiles, soft books, rattles and other noisemakers, busy boxes, activity tables, stacking toys, and push and pull toys. Step two, as you browse, ask yourself two questions about any toy that catches your eye. Does it look like something my baby will enjoy? And is it safe? Step three, consider size and weight. 
Your baby will have the most fun with a toy that he can get a grip on, one that's not too heavy or large for him to manipulate. Step four, look for a toy that offers different textures, especially for very young babies. Step five, choose toys that your baby can interact with. He should be a participant in making it jingle or roll, not a passive observer. Basic or old-fashioned toys like blocks or stacking cups can be very educational, whether or not they're labeled as such. Step six, pick toys in bright, cheery hues. Even infants love different colors. Step seven, do a safety check. Don't buy any toy that your baby could choke on, that has small pieces that could break off, or that has a string or cord that's shorter than six inches. If a toy is small enough to fit inside an empty toilet paper roll, it's small enough to choke a baby. Step eight, finally, rate its annoyance factor. Who cares what the baby likes? Is the sound the toy makes going to drive you nuts? Did you know dolls are the oldest known toys? How to install hardware mounted baby gates. You never can be too careful when it comes to child safety, so take extra care when installing your baby gate. You will need baby gates, a tape measure, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Optional, a cordless drill. Failure to install your baby gates correctly could lead to serious injury or death. Always double check your work. Step one, measure the door frame or wall area where you want to install the baby gates. Step two, purchase the appropriately sized baby gate. Look for a gate that's certified by the Juvenile Products Manufacturers Association. Step three, install the gate directly into the wall stud, making sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions. If no wall stud is available, install the gate installation kit on the wall using the hollow wall anchors included with the kit. Step four, test the gate repeatedly to make sure that it works properly. Step five, adjust as needed, and you will have taken a big step toward making your home a safe place for your baby. Did you know the heaviest baby ever born weighed in at 23.12 pounds? How to install pressure mounted baby gates. Do you want to put up secure baby gates in your home without putting holes in the wall? Here's the best way to do it. You will need baby gates and a tape measure. Failure to install your baby gates correctly could lead to serious injury or death. Always double check your work. Step one, measure the door frame or wall area where you want to install the baby gates. Step two, purchase the appropriately sized baby gates. Look for the gate that's certified by the Juvenile Products Manufacturers Association. Step three, mount the gate between two strong surfaces. Be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Call the manufacturer directly if you have any questions. Step four, test the gate repeatedly to make sure that it works properly. Step five, adjust as needed and be sure to check on the gate regularly to make sure that it's working as it should. Did you know children between one and four years old have the highest rate of home injury death? How to pick a diaper bag. A diaper bag enables you to pack all of your baby's essentials. These suggestions will help you choose the perfect bag to fit your needs. You'll need capacity, bottle holders, padded straps, stroller straps, compartments, a changing pad, and sanitizer. Optional, insulation. Step one, choose a bag with enough room to hold food, diapers, lotion, and bottles. Step two, look for a bag that has specifically designed bottle holders to protect the bottles from spilling. Insulated bags are designed to keep bottles cool. Step three, make sure the straps are padded and adjustable. Well-designed shoulder support alleviates shoulder and back pain. Step four, choose a material that will last. Leather and nylon bags cost more but last longer. Stain-resistant fabrics are also a plus. Step five, look for a bag that has straps that can attach to your stroller's handlebars. Step six, Purchase a bag that has compartments that parents can use. Most include a place to store your cell phone, keys, and wallet. Step seven, keep your bag well stocked. Don't forget to carry a changing pad and sanitizer. Did you know? A baby uses approximately six to 10,000 diapers before they are potty trained. How to pick a playpen. Playpens provide children with a place to play and sleep. Make sure your child is comfortable and safe with these great tips. You will need a computer with internet access, a JMPA logo, padding on the top and corner rails, sturdy construction, safe mesh, collapsibility, and a registration card. Step one, check for recalls at cpsc.gov. Look for a JMPA logo on the playpen. 
to ensure the proper safety standards are up to date. Step 2. Protect your baby from injury with padding on the top and corner rails. Hinges and supports should also be protected. Step 3. Make sure the playpen is sturdy and will not tip over if the child leans on it. Step 4. Choose a playpen with mesh sides that have holes no bigger than a quarter inch. Frequently check the mesh sides for rips and tears. Step 5. Buy a playpen that folds up and fits in a carrying case for easy transport. Step 6. Send in the manufacturer's registration card to receive recall notices. Did you know? In the U.S., more than 2.5 million playpens, portable cribs, and play yards are sold annually. How to pick a stroller. You will be pushing your child in a stroller for at least a couple of years, so use these suggestions to help you decide on the best one for you. You will need a computer with internet access, a restraint system, a canopy, an adjustable seat, a storage area, collapsibility, and removable fabric. Optional, a five-point harness. Step 1. Check for stroller recalls at cpsc.gov. Safety is your top priority. Step 2. Choose a stroller with a restraint system that easily latches and unlatches. A five-point harness is the safest restraint. Step 3. Protect your child from the sun, rain, and wind with an adjustable canopy. Step 4. Choose a seat that is adjustable. This is a must for infants that can't support their head. This feature is also great for nap time. Step 5. Buy a stroller with a storage area so you can keep diapers, bottles, and toys readily available. Step 6. Look for a stroller that folds with one hand or foot. This leaves one hand free for your baby. Step 7. Buy a stroller with removable fabric for easy cleaning. Did you know, in 2007, there were more American babies born than any other year in U.S. history. How to pick a tear-free shampoo. Choose a tear-free shampoo that will cleanse and moisturize your baby's scalp. You will need labels and brand recognition. Step one, look for shampoo labels that read tear-free. Step two, choose a shampoo that is free of alcohol and soap. Make sure shampoos are dermatology tested and hypoallergenic. Step three, avoid shampoos that are perfumed or that contain fragrances. Step four, Use a brand that you are familiar with. Help the environment by choosing organic shampoos. Did you know? There are approximately 100,000 hair follicles on the scalp. Well, if toys are safe. Keep your child's safety your top priority by following these tips on toy safety. You will need research and a computer with internet access. Optional, an empty toilet paper roll. Step one, check the toy's packaging for the manufacturer's recommended age before purchasing. Step two, check all electronic toys to see if they are UL approved. The label should indicate that Underwriter Laboratories approved it. Step three, check for recalls online at www.recalls.gov or www.cpsc.gov. Step four, avoid toys with small and removable parts which can pose a choking hazard. Any toy that can fit in an empty toilet paper roll is too small for a child younger than three years. Step five, inspect toys with batteries to make sure they are not exposed or leaking. Step six, inspect toys on a regular basis to see if any pieces are broken. Step seven, ensure all crayons, paints, and markers are non-toxic. Supervise playtime to keep your child safe. Did you know? On November 27, 2005, a scale model train set a record for being the largest at 361 feet 10 inches.